Hello, folks, and welcome to another evening of messing with Ultimate Admiral Dreadnought to try and build ships. Specifically in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and build a Treaty 1923 ship, a boat relatively equivalent to the ship that uh, the ships that the Royal Navy built, the Lord Nelson class, which is Nelson and Rodney. Now, this is going to be fun because the Nelson and Rodney had all forward armament, and I'm not sure how this is going to work, but. I guess we'll find out really, really soon. So, let's take it and see what happens. Okay. Click to rename. Rodney. Test. I'm sorry, not Nelson. I really like Rodney in particular. Um, some of the stuff that ship got up to in World War II was epic. <coughs> its supposed top speed was 23 knots, but at least once it was reported by the Germans to have been doing over 26 knots. Somehow. Um, nobody's quite sure how they may have actually had to get out and push, for all we know. So I'm going to set top speed at 26 knots just because. <clears throat> ship was reasonably long ranged. Uh, bulkheads maximum. This ship was built specifically to um, be a almost a solid block of steel in some ways. It was incredibly well armored, and um, well, it was just basically an incredibly uh, powerful piece of uh, equipment. Now, at the time, that was probably the best that was available. We know that balance draft was available. That's not a problem. We know the ship had geared turbines. And yes, it did have an auxiliary power system. It actually had relatively advanced shafts from what we can tell. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been able to do what it was doing. It had steering good steering now it also had the best available armor the british could fit to it which at that time would have been krupp 4. it and this is where it gets really fun the british kind of cheated with the washington naval treaty or well they didn't actually cheat what they didn't bother telling everybody else was that um their torpedo defense system was full of water so technically under the treaty the water and their keto torpedo defense system didn't actually count toward the ship's full weight yeah great fun um anyway so we'll give it the maximum anti torp because that actually is what it had it had a superb system um it was a triple hulled and again it had really heavily and reinforced bulkheads it had any flooding defenses and we'll call it Sindel 3. In actual truth, the British capital ships at this point in time had given up on the Sindel, but the game doesn't like that, so we'll just have to put up with it. Now, again, the ship was designed to be the best available, so it had the best main tower that they could give it at the time. Now, we'll go first to funnel. There, notice we've got engine efficiency 192%. That basically matches what we're talking about with uh, Rodney. Now, let's see, 345 tons, 1.2 millions. You see, what we're looking for here is highest aiming speed and base accuracy because that's what we would have had. Okay, so that means modern secondary two. Now, can I fit down the back end of the ship? No, I can't. So, let's go to this one here. Will it fit? Nope. What's the biggest one that I can fit on the stern of this ship? Because that was... 
actually, maybe what I've got to do is cheat a little bit here. Let's haul this forward. Oh, back to the main tower. It's the only way it works is if I put the main tower right here. I'm going to have to go for as small as I can on the secondary tower. Let's see, maybe that's why the compact secondary tower would be... Well, it doesn't like that either. It doesn't seem to like any secondary tower, at least not if it's placed there. It wants it up here. So, let's go back here, yank this off, yank this off, and go for our secondary tower. Okay, we'll go for the compact secondary tower because we think we can cheat. Now, just a second. Tall funnel. See, it looks like there's supposed to be a capability to mount a funnel on here. But I can't see how to do it. And sometimes with the way the system is designed, it's really hard to tell what you are and are allowed to do are and are not allowed to do so it's kind of guessing 192 percent i don't need quite that percentage let's go with a slightly smaller funnel now modern tower four not actually making that much of a difference until you get down to there okay let's try with the maximum because it really did have okay I don't think this is gonna work for the simple reason I don't think I'm gonna be able to fit all the equipment in uh, very tall superimposed barbette There, now, main guns, center line guns, due to treaty, they were limited to 16-inch guns on this ship. Now, notice we can't fit the main guns in. We can, kind of, almost. So, we need to shrink the main tower. Let's go back. We want to fit a slightly smaller main tower. And it doesn't seem any smaller. Let's try another one. Still not small enough. Okay. Um, that might do. Main guns. Center line. 16 inch. You know, historically, they use the triple mount. That's what we use. Now we'll put in a, let's scroll up, very tall superimposed barbette. We'll drop another triple 16 up here. And we should, in theory, be able to get one on there, and we can't. There's where our problem is. It just isn't possible to fit it. Not that way, at least. Now, maybe, just maybe, if I go back here and look at the barbettes, I'll find one that offers a better option. I don't see anything that would allow that. We still got this huge area at the back here. So, it's not going to allow us to design a Rodney, which is really annoying. I wanted to. That honestly is my favorite. That class of ship is my favorite. It is amazing. Okay, so we're going to go back here and restart this. Let's strip the entire ship down. Go back to the hull. Now, this is technically too big, but maybe not. Let's see. 
if we go here and we set max to 44, which is approximately where Rodney came in at. Again, higher the speed than what it actually technically supposed that we had. Okay, let's try and get this. And balance turbines. They had geared turbines. Yes, they did have an auxiliary engine. They had a fairly advanced drive shaft. They had advanced steering. Best armor available at the time. As I was explaining when I was saying, mentioned earlier, the best anti-torpedo defenses, because the British kind of cheated there. And this ship was designed to be able to soak up tons of damage. And I mean literally tons of damage. Okay, so let's go back here and try and put on the componentry. Main tower. It's always hard to tell exactly where you can put stuff because, well, let's see. Yeah, I wanted to go back here and give this thing the best secondary tower available. And that meant actually finding out where the stupid thing fits. Okay, there. That's where it fits. Funnel. On. I can put the funnel that far back. Now that is really useful because it means that my main tower can go as far back as possible. There we are. Now we need a tall superimposed barbette, which should be about right here, I think. Looking at it, I'm, you know, this is going by judgment, of course. Going by eye, I may end up having to move things, wouldn't be the first time. And there is a nice triple 16 inch cannon. Oops. And it doesn't quite fit. So let's go back here again. Now, I'm placing that as far back as possible. Historically, Rodney actually had problems firing its rear turret. If it was firing it as far, turned as far to the rear as possible, it had a tendency to blow out the uh, window glass in the uh, bridge. Needless to say, the uh, captain probably wasn't a fan of that. Uh, these guns were powerful. At the time they were installed, they were quite possibly the most powerful guns that had ever been installed on a warship. And um, these gun ships, quite frankly, scared the wits out of everybody else because they were so strong. Okay, there we are. We've got an aft loft with a set of 7%, but that's livable. Now, we need to stick in some secondary guns. Historically, the ship had 6-inch guns, but they were later replaced by 5.25. However, we're going to go with the original 6-inch guns. They went with um, triple batteries, which was extremely unusual at the time. Now, a sec, I'm going to make sure this is far enough back that it doesn't interfere with the main guns. Oh, and of course, it's not going to let me... In all the ones where I want. Okay. Maybe what I have to do is yank that and go with two barrel guns instead. Of 
course, you can't just put them where they were on the original ships because this doesn't allow, have any allowance for that. That is approximately how many turrets there were, even if they aren't quite in the right spaces. Um, but this isn't meant for uh, historical accuracy. They also had a bunch of 3-inch anti-aircraft guns. Now, this is where it gets really fun. I don't remember exactly the original layout, so I'm not even going to try. I'm just going to put some of these in, in places that seem obvious based on the design we get to play with in the way the um, uh, the various components you can you're allowed to add the various components now we're not getting fancy here we're just adding stuff where um, there's room now also there may have been some one barrel mounts in places I'm not going to Okay, no, it doesn't look like it's ruined to mount any one barrel units. Let's go back here and check. Last, but lost in the east. Because late war, they were sticking guns on these things everywhere they could. But even by this point, they realized that aircraft were beginning to become a problem. The Royal Navy was at the uh, forefront of carrier aviation during this period. Um, I know a lot of people have heard all the uh, bulls crap arguments that the uh, admirals were against carriers. The admirals were the ones advocating for carriers. And um, if you check Alex Clark's channel, he has some excellent content covering that period. Now, I need to bring the weight down at some point, but let's just hang on a second. What did I do wrong to get the weight so high? higher than I think it should be. And the aft off weight offset is kind of insane. Okay, let's go back here and yank this thing. Yank this. Go back to secondary tower and see if we install a smaller secondary tower. Now, once again, stick in a really big funnel. And then I hate this. You can't just pick it up, move it with everything on it. You have to actually okay. see yeah sometimes it's a bit of a pain half weight offset isn't too bad now but 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 okay um secondary guns five inch no, wrong. Six inch, two barrels. Hmm. Doesn't seem to have much luck there. Oh, there's one there. Now, why can't I find any other? Here's another one. Good. And there. That approximately matches the original ship's output outfit. Now we'll go back and stick half a ton of twin three inch all over the ship. As I said, 
aircraft, aviation was a huge thing in the Royal Navy, and they had an amazing amount of aviation assets. Oops, just a second. Let me go down and pop some one barrel ones on if there's any spaces. Let's see. No, I'm not seeing any that I would dare put a weapon in. Okay, technically this ship had underwater torpedo launchers. Now, one there, one there, and one there. We have about a thousand tons. Go back down here. Uh, components, right. Now we have to get into weapons. These ships had uh, large torpedoes. It won't allow me to put the ones in that we need, but that's what we're putting in. Best available. Cover all those now. It had rangefinders. Had excellent rangefinders. Acoustics weren't so hot, but it's not a sub hunter. Yes, it did have RDF. Now let's close off that section. And do some things with the armor. It says the ship is overweight. Now note the aft weight offset once again has gone up to 9.4%. So as much as I hate to remove some stuff from the aft, let's cut the aft belt down. And the aft deck. Almost, almost. This is really tricky because it's hard to tell. These ships had what everybody else calls an all, what is called an all or nothing armor scheme. So I'm going to assume that if I pull off all the four belt, or at least cut it way down. I can bounce to places where I need the armor way up. So let's cut the four belt to zero. Or no, let's cut it to one inch. One inch is reasonable. Basically one inch is uh, what you would call splinter proof. Okay, aft belt. Yeah, and I know originally I started this out trying to balance weights, but I'm going to do that the hard way after okay fore deck Now, aft deck. Okay, we're almost there. Now, it may seem kind of funny spinning armor down when I say this thing was designed to survive anything, but trick is where it was designed to take it. And basically the idea was you could shoot away both ends of the ship, but the ship could keep on fighting in theory. 
We never actually found out how good it would have uh, worked. Uh, no ship with an all or nothing armor scheme ever got hurt that badly that I can remember. So. Well, except for, uh, pardon me, our uh, good old friend Yamato. Yamato got the living daylights kicked out of it, and so did Musashi. Uh, but that wasn't actually in combat with other ships, so it doesn't quite count. Okay, we got a 19-inch barbette. Now, the typical rule of thumb is that you want your armor to be the thickness of your shells. So if you have a 16-inch shell, you want 16 inches of armor. I've gone somewhat above on that because, again, this was, these ships were designed to go in and pound it out close range to survive anything. You could hit their turrets, but it wasn't going to do you much good because they had the armor to take the pounding. Now, let's see. It's kind of hard to guess how much armor to put on. Um, barbettes are the really dangerous parts. That's where your ammo storage is. So generally, that's where I would go heaviest. But the most exposed is the turret side. Okay, that's as high as I can get that one. Now, I have a little bit, still a bit of a naft weight offset. That is a problem I'm not going to be able to get rid of, I, no matter what I do. Um, I'm not going to mess with the gun caliber, because this was to try and make it as it was, and that's the size it used. But, now, I can start pumping some main belt in. Okay, now notice we're very close to uh, the maximum, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn around and I'm going to pump up the four belts lightly. I said this was an all or nothing armor scheme, but I want to get that nose down a bit. Um, an half weight offset of, well, was it over 20% at one point? It's just not supportable. And let's see, four belt. And four deck. Oh, right. Superstructure. Let's crank that up just a bit. And then four deck. Forty-three seventy-nine, forty-three ninety-three. Don't think I can go one more. Yes, I just barely can. I can go up two inches on the four deck. Half weight offset is 0.3%, which is really darn near perfect. Um, it's not a really a Rodney equivalent. There are differences, but the basics are similar. Heavily, heavily armored ship and armored in the areas where it is needed. In theory, this thing should be able to go up against most. World War I, uh, and for that matter, most treaty battleships and pound the crap out of them. The only thing it can't do with the treaty battleships is keep up. But, well, it was designed before um, engines had developed as much. And quite frankly, if they'd have had the time to upgrade the engines, they probably could have pushed more speed out of it. You know, they said probably. Uh, one of the mistakes that they may have made in the design was designing it with only twin shafts. Um, a couple of naval historians who know engineering, the engineering side of underwater propulsion a lot better than I do, uh, swear that with only twin shafts it would have limited the speed, but hey, they're the experts on that, not me. Anyway, I am going to be loading this up, saving this to my Patreon. Uh, along with all the other ship designs I've made, which are all designed to basically try and show a point, a technological point of some sort, and to try and to build something within limit. I mean, anybody can turn around and build a 
big, 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 big ship using the biggest stuff available. But building something on a budget, that's harder. It takes thought. Anyway, have a good day, folks, and stay safe.